for 57 years, Bob Edens was blind. When he was 57 years old, a doctor performed a delicate surgery on Bob's eyes, and for the first time in his life, Bob could see. Bob talked about seeing sunrises and sunsets, a mountain range across the sky, jet streams across the sky, flowers, trees, birds for the first time in his life. But he talked mostly about color, reds, greens, and blues, and purples. He said, I just love color. But yellow, yellow was Bob's favorite. He said, I'm just stunned by yellow. When's the last time that you were stunned by yellow or green or purple? We can spend an entire lifetime seeing a sunrise and a sunset and the vibrancy of colors and the rainbows across the sky and the amazing, beautiful things in this world and be blind. The crash of an ocean wave, the beautiful sound. But we're not stunned by it anymore. We take it for granted. We don't think about it. We see it too often, or we just forget that God is the maker of that. He's the maker of that majesty. The same God who threw the stars in the sky and created mountains out of nothing and created you and I out of a piece of dirt from the ground and breathed his spirit within us and looked at us and said, this is good, is majesty. God is majesty, master of the universe, king of all that you could ever see, ever imagine, ever dream of. He is master of that. That's pretty amazing. Amen? God is majesty, the one who created all that we could ever dream of, all we could ever imagine. You know, the people who met God when he was here on earth in human form, when Jesus was here on earth, the people who met him were changed. Their lives were radically changed because of meeting him. Because see, what Peter said, What Peter said was best. He said, when Jesus was here on earth, he said, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. That's how he described what it was like to be here on earth with Jesus. And it was true because the people who met him were radically changed. You remember the story of the woman at the well, the woman from Samaria, who's dragging her feet as she goes to the well, sneaking at the hottest part of the day to get water before anyone from town sees her. She encounters Jesus Christ, and the next thing you know, she's running back to the village and shouting at the top of her lungs, come and see this man. Come and see this man. Could it be, could it be that he's the Savior? And Scripture says, and they followed her. And they followed her to go meet this Jesus. Or how about the two disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus in the Gospel of Luke? And Jesus appears and begins to speak to them. They don't recognize that it's Jesus. But later, when they find out that it was Jesus they were speaking with, they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he explained the gospels, to, as he explained the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning within us? Or how about John and Peter in the Acts of the Apostles? They had been thrown in jail for preaching about Jesus for being followers of Jesus. They'd been thrown in jail, and the next day, they were brought out of jail, and they were told by the leaders, you need to stop speaking about this Jesus Christ. You need to stop it, or you're going to go back to prison. And you know what Peter and John said? We cannot help but talk about what we have seen and what we have heard. We cannot help it even though they were at risk of going to prison. And they did, again and again and again. But they couldn't help it because they had experienced the majesty of Christ. They had experienced something that was beyond their own understanding and anything they had ever experienced before. It was powerful. It was life-changing. They were stunned by the majesty of Christ. They were stunned by who he was and who he still is today. I remember the first time I ever was stunned by the majesty of Christ. 
I was in seventh grade. My family had gone to Montana to go on vacation, and we went to Glacier Park. Glacier Park is beautiful. And I remember going up into this little area where there was a lake, a really, really deep lake. You couldn't see. The water was crystal clear. In fact, we took, had canteens with us, and we were actually able to drink the water. It was so pure and so clean. But you couldn't even see to the bottom. It was so deep. And there was a big rock, big boulder, sitting right on the side of that lake. And it was surrounded by mountains and trees, and the sun was up in the sky. And I climbed up onto that boulder, and I sat there. And I didn't move for a long time. And I was in seventh grade, so my mom and dad probably thought I was ill. But I just sat there and looked at the water and looked at the mountains and the trees and the sun. And Montana's called the big sky country for a reason. The sky looks like it goes on forever. And I remember sitting there and just thinking, I am so small. I am so small. And just in that moment, realized how big God was. That he was so much bigger than anything I could ever imagine or think about or dream of. That he was so big. That was my first experience of witnessing the majesty of who God was. The majesty of God's love for his people by creating this amazing, miraculous, beautiful, profound world that we live in. And helping to me to remember to not take it for granted. And to remember to be grateful for the beauty that I see around me. I live in Colorado, so I don't see the ocean very often. So whenever I come to the ocean, I'm always so excited to go hear the crash of the waves. But, but I don't forget that when I drive by those mountains every day, to look up and remember the majesty of God, the majesty of Christ. As Peter said it, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We are eyewitnesses of his majesty every time we come to the altar for Eucharist. His majesty resides there. It's not a symbol, it's not a sign. Body, blood, soul, divinity, truly Christ present every time we come to Eucharistic table. We witness the majesty of Christ. My prayer for all of us this weekend is that our hearts would burn within us. It would burn within us as we experience the majesty of Christ and that we would be stunned by all that he is.